guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale, and I got Bag back on the channel. Bag, it's been a while. How you doing, man? What up, what up, YouTube? It's Bag. <laughs> um, we're back again today. We've got some double prince decks. Um, it's been a while, but um, long time no see. How you doing, YouTube? Um, yeah. They said they're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming back on, man. And like you said, I mean, I love when you're on because I can just sit back and relax, and you can you can uh, you can handle this, man. You should start. You should be more active on your YouTube channel. But that's another conversation. We could talk about that at the end of the video. But uh, today you selected four double prince decks, and double prince, although it's probably been in better spots when it was super dominant, you say it's not dead. And, and these are four completely viable decks that you're going to be playing all live on ladder. You're currently at fifty. 58 something or other so you're pretty high in trophies uh what do you think what do you think like you guys can see the decks right now but what do you think of double prince and beatdown in general right now bag i think beatdown in general is doing really well especially golem i think that double prince isn't at its strongest but i think it's something that people are counting out when they shouldn't because prince is really strong dark prince like not many people are expecting it and it can get a lot of value and it's a very versatile card on offense and defense uh it's pretty it's mainly you double prince is mainly for giant decks but i decided to like throw together a little bit of a golem deck since the ice wizard and barbarrel are so strong the mega minion does well against the e-drags and then the other decks uh the giant triple spell double prince you see it in crl at least i think every season i've seen it in crl asia the giant double prince um with the, the spammy cards uh it's it's like seen a little bit but like the people who use it there's a guy named uh yafo 04 who um who is italian and he uses this deck he used to push heisenberg and he always would be like that guy that got number one then tilt but it's like um it's, it's still a solid deck i think double prince is something that people shouldn't count out because um yeah it can get a lot of value when you got those two guys charging at your tower and yeah. you sit there helplessly getting your tower taken <laughs> absolutely man well let's go ahead and get, jump right on to into the ladder do you want to start with the golem deck or if you had to rank uh, let's these... end with the golem okay, i let's... think the best yeah. one is the, the triple spell one Okay. I think the second best one is the um the spam one. Okay. And With the I think bats. the golem one. I I kind of yeah. And then I think the the third or the golem one and the dark goblin one. I kind of assembled those myself. Okay. But I think there I I haven't like tested I haven't, them a lot. Too. I haven't tested them as much as the other ones because the other ones have shown like a staple of Clash Royale the last year or so. Not main staple lately, but like still pretty solid. Right. Um, so I think these decks, um, I haven't seen enough, but I think they do have a lot of potential. So we'll start right. out with the triple spell one. Heck yeah, sounds good, so man. Let's... So we'll do yep. the uh, the Ewiz uh, giant triple spell and yes, go sir. ahead and search when ready, man. Yeah, and another thing, um, giant double prince decks. I uh, or really double prince decks. Since it's a little bit expensive to use both of them, uh, I don't think lightning works great with them. So that's why most of these decks you see have the mega minion to deal with the e dragon. Mm -hmm. So we're playing against Nim right here. So this yeah. is a pretty good opponent. He's right really here. good. Yeah, from Vietnam Glory. He was like one of the. I don't think he was the guy who made it. You would probably know, right? But he was like one of the pioneers of Bridge Fam, like really early on. Yeah, the Night Witch one in 2017. Yes. Then yes. I knew you know exactly who and what, where it was first played, but yeah, the Vietnam deck back in the day. But okay, so Royal Giant, how do you feel about this match? Uh, well, we both cycled Logs to start. I'm guessing he. This is kind of peculiar. I'd expect him to have a Barbarrel, especially since this account has Max Barbarrel. But um, we'll see. We've got the the giant Ewis and the Prince gonna clean up right there. I'm not gonna overcommit because if he gets a tor tornado, we could kill things. So we're kind of let that play out. RG doesn't even get a hit. Um. Yeah, we're just gonna let that play. Cyclone Mega Minion in the back. Um, the Prince should get two hits on the Ice Wizard. Okay, one since he. Well, all right, that's a yikes. So we're gonna go Dark Prince here because he logs, so he can't knock that back. And we're gonna have to see um, what his answers are. So now we know a little bit more about his deck and what type of RG he's running. Um, the Dark Prince is gonna get that charge there, um, cleaning it up, and he still has to answer there. We're gonna zap just so we can finish that off. And there we go. Wow, well played. Like you, and I think you have the elixir advantage too. Do you do you count elixir or like how do you keep track of that? I, I don't. Sometimes I have a feel. Like yeah. if I know they're desperately trying or they're trying to place a card down, they don't have enough, and then they play it. It mm -hmm. kind of you get a picture of like, yeah. oh, they just played it because they're desperately trying to play it. Um, but I usually get a feel of like medium low. Like if you have like a, a um, like a color scale from like black to white or like the whatever. 
or it's called like the color board, color wheel, whatever you want to call it. Like it's like the high and the low, and you kind of get a feel of if they're medium, high, or low on Elixir. I'm not the kind okay. of like, oh, we did 6.26 gotcha, Elixir. Gotcha, gotcha. Like, so you just always have yeah. a general feel. That's that's what yeah. seems to be the most common. I don't think anybody is like sitting there with an abacus counting counting out every single Elixir. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we're into double elixir time. Uh, would the ultimate push with this deck be a double prince behind a giant with like a mega minion or something? Or, or is it all situational, right? It could be kind of anything. Mm -hmm. It could be kind of anything that's threatening but when they have bad um, cycle um, or elixir. We're in a fireball there. That dark prince, the dank prince, gonna do some splash. Yeah, he, how did he? That's um, some reach on there. <laughs> Hitting the tower yeah. behind that bowler. Nice. You should see him at the CRL combine. Oh, that's an aggressive RG. Wow. wow he's going uh, we just gotta go Prince, Log, he still has to answer that. I'm gonna zap this, and I think that Prince is gonna be something he is not prepared to deal with. So, if he spends more on the left lane, we'll see, Bowler, this allows us to just go right in here since he does not run that Mega Minion. Actually, does he? I forgot. No. Um, but that's gonna be a lot of damage. Um, we're gonna fireball the Baby Dragon, and oh, we got the guards. And then there, that's and then the Giant. Well, we can just spell Cycle, but the Giant's gonna yeah. take it. Um, so the knight, the jubilation knight, I think. Okay, nice. <laughs> nice name. Right, you, what, hey, what was your, uh, what was your fantasy team bag? Oh, oh, um, I, I, uh, have several accounts, um, with my name on it, bag, Chinese, bag, looking bolt, and bag level 12. So I assembled three different teams, <laughs> and I wasn't thinking of how the system worked with the crowns, but I think the a good team is, like, having a really solid, dominant player the team relies on, like, um, Expo Master. I think God RF is probably the best pick. Um, AU1, and then I'd say, um, you could kind of take another all-around player that's gonna get good playing time. That's kind of, like, what I've kind of realized, um, in general, uh, about the fantasy teams, but I kind of just hopped in, like, oh, I need the emotes in my <laughs> team. Max yeah, account. I think most people did like, the same thing. I, I wasn't worried about the gems. I kind of wanted the emotes, and I just picked, like, my friends, who are very, very good um, yeah. as they got the world finals. But I think the best team would be, like, 2v2, 1v1 players, a dominant player, like, King, uh, like, Expo Master that the team relies on, and then, like, one more player that can kind of do it all, like, LC up or AU1 or yeah, okay. Royal. Sounds good. Do you want to play the, the, the cycle deck next, the 3.4? Uh, the Ice Spirit? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. All right, cool. The Dark Goblin. Sure, uh, let's yeah. Let's queue up. Shouldn't uh, be that long. Well. Yeah, while you're... I went with... My team was uh, AU, LC Op, So King, and... Uh, AU, LC Op, So King, and Royal. But I think I made a mistake, because I think that you should pick uh, t two players from the two teams that you think will go to the finals, because they'll have oh, yeah, the most reps, you know? And the I most... think Immortals and Nova are two very... Um, um, two yeah. very good teams. Yeah, yeah in right. case so. Yeah. So, yeah. In the match. yeah, so we'll see how it goes. But anyway, talk talk a little bit about this deck. Back to the uh, the decks here. So, this deck is obviously really fast. How are you playing it differently than the one we just saw? Well, this one you need to be a little bit more surgical with your placements. We're going to take the tower there because the Ice Spirit and then the Dark Go That's a good thing about the Dark Prince. If they had the Infernal Dragon, the Ice Spirit reset it and the Infernal Dragon had to go through the Dark Prince twice, otherwise, um, just once. Uh, uh, that tower is gone. I have no air units in the in cycle, so this deck is a little bit weak to lava loom. But let's see if we can go kind of aggressive here. Um, I'm just gonna zap the tower. I need the cycle, and then I'm gonna play a poison here to clean up the lava pups and damage the balloon. Dark prince right here. Valk won't get splash. The lava pups will just die, and there the balloon's gonna get some damage. But right now we. We can't go in because he can Inferno Dragon and we can't clean it up. So this is a, this is a pretty rough matchup. Lava Loon is kind of the weakness to this deck. But I think um, if we can get some really good Dark Goblin value, um, then we could win this game. Um, okay. We're going to cycle an Ice Bear in the back to see if he goes with the Lava Hound. Um, if, right, my Dark viewers, if my viewers want a little bit more air support to this deck, could they sub in maybe like an Ice Wiz for, or something like that instead of Ice well, Spirit? Ice Wiz, you need or... the NATO. I'd say maybe you can always put the Mega Man in, uh, okay, um, in okay. your deck. Yeah. Um, you could put minions maybe for a little bit more bait. Um, if you want, you could actually put in the um, the rascals um, oh, okay. for mate. I mean, it takes away the double prince. But if you're really struggling and you want more bait, you could put um rascals for either like the prince or dark prince because you don't want to have like five or three five elixir cards and two yeah. four elixir cards. Yeah. Um, in this kind of deck. Let's yeah, see. but to be fair though, like this is probably the worst matchup for this deck. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, but so, yeah. We're just gonna have to try to defend this. Um, he's probably gonna play a balloon on the king tower. That's what I would have done. Um, so we'll see if we can get this. 
Um, let's pull this back. Nice. Um, yeah, the arrows can put the dark oven as well. Yeah, I'm just forced to kind of poison zap here, which is not... Not great. Yeah, not necessarily what you want to do, but again, well, 27 seconds here, maybe a miracle. Maybe you can pull something let's off see. here. Yeah. Okay, he Mega Minions, that's a good answer, so we're really going to go all in on this on the left, left lane. Power. Okay, here we go. Actually, we, we're, we have to clean that up. He's going to play a Valkyrie on top, so the Prince can get working. And then we're going to have to play a Tombstone. Um, the cycle is, is it's very fast, but we need... I, I see... I mean, Lava Loon, the reason I made this deck like this is because you don't see a lot of Lava Loon. Yeah. <laughs> um, because of like, the E-Dragon. Ooh, he missed with the death damage takes it and the arrows, yeah. yeah. That's a good game. This is a hard matchup. Like this is really like the last thing you'd want to face. If I'm going into a game here and I got giant, like you know, I'm chilling with Pekka Inferno Tower. Then <laughs> uh, I don't think so, man. Yeah, that so, was a, that was a tough um, one, but uh, let's just let's keep it moving though. Do you want or unless you want to yeah. redo with that one? What do you want? Oh, uh, well, I think we can just. I mean, that. I, I don't I mean a redo, but unless you want to go another one, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, let's play one more with this deck. Okay, all right, guys, we're coming back. That was actually a six-minute match, and it was relatively boring, just Expo versus Giant. So let's get back. Let's just move on to the next deck, if that's cool with you. Yeah, it's cool with me. All right, Here want to do... Giant double points. Yeah. Spam okay. um, with the Spear Goblins, the Goblin Gang, the Bats. This is probably um, the deck that I see the most out of the four. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people like um, just go back to this for nostalgia, and mm -hmm. they will definitely pick up some dubs. Let's see, Shadow here. We're going to give him the good luck. Um, what I, is your favorite yeah. of the new emotes out of curiosity, Bay? Oh, the free ones. I kind of like the the bandit. Yeah. So, yeah the Musketeer things. just looks like constipated, I feel like. I, a bit. Yeah, it's a little bit It's a little bit cringy. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing over there. <laughs> yeah. Poison that. All right. Uh, there we go. That's a good poison. Yep. He's got the Hunter. Um, he's probably running three Musketeers, Hog with Fireball, Log, and yeah. All right, okay. so Prince right here, he's going to hog opposite lane, possibly. Yeah, there's a 3M. So we're going to have to... Okay, I can't really think about this. We uh, have Dark Prince, obviously, but... I'm going to giant the tank for... Okay, he just did that, so I'm going to go Dark Prince Goblin Gang on top of that. So here. And then look, he just logged, so I he, he's going yeah. to... That's game. Wow. The Dark Prince gets that Dark Prince is very, very loyal. I mean... <laughs> he's he's very loyal to the king, Bag Sealer. So we've got the, the giant in the poison there. And even though he does have 3M, we have the bat, which he can't zap. And then we've got the dark prince. We can play right on top. And if we need to, we can giant to block the 3M. And since 3M costs 9 elixir, giant and dark prince is the same amount of elixir as 3M. And you still get a dark prince on the counter push, even though the giant dies. So he's going to play the hog. We're just going to bat. And he fireballs. That's 8 against 2. And now he has to deal with the prince. And we're still up 1 elixir. He's probably going to play skeletons in the middle right now. So do I do a pre zap for YouTube? Let's go. Do it. Oh no! Oh. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, I, I mean, to be fair, like, I can't zap the dark nothing goblin. Nothing venture, nothing gained anyway. Yeah. Um, let's see. He might play a prelog. Okay, that, that was poor timing, but the spear goblin's still gonna clean that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. One, two. The dark uh, goblin's very, speaking very nice. Speaking of three musketeers, because we're going against it, you you for the longest time played uh, three musketeers giant on ladder, but then you switched to like almost exclusively golem. Is that still the case right now? Um, yeah, I, I really like Golem in this meta, and I yeah. traded to max my e drag on my, um, my other bag account. Okay. And, um, yeah, I'm doing pretty well with it on ladder. Um, you can catch my streams. I'm streaming every day. Um, I'm on Thanksgiving break right now, so I'm streaming kind of early in the morning. Okay. Um, and I'm streaming top 50 ladder games. I tried to get 6,400, but, um, and, yeah, I had to go pick some oranges to help my family out and donate to charity. Oh, very so, cool of you. Um, yeah, because the, the, the fire is um, effective. Um, yeah, right you're in that area, kind of, right? So, we're, we, we gotta do this. Alright, um, the hog is not threatening enough, because I can just prince. The hog's gonna get three hits. That's fine. There's three, dark but prince you see Dark Prince, not even in time. Yeah. And, um... There it is, GG. <laughs> the Musketeer emo. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really happy they added like these cards, because the bandit's not as OG, but it's such a nice... Nice card, and it's like really apparent in the meta. It's like kind of mm -hmm. like what you call it, a perfectly balanced card. The musketeer yes. and the knight are just such like OG cards. It's like it's like basketball. Like with the players, you start out like like yeah. the musketeer and, and the um in the knight are obviously going to be the, the they're one of the based cards of the game. Like Absolutely. soft 
Like uh, the night yeah. is my personal fave of the uh, of the. Four. I, I think a lot of people really yeah. like the night. But I think um, a lot of people like Bandit too. From my comments on the recent videos, a lot of you guys yeah. told me that you, you're a big fan. So let's go into the Golem deck, man. Let's do this. There you go. While All we right, go so, in, okay, go ahead. Um, Golem. I was personally, I think I I used to be a, a pretty good Golem player, mm -hmm. but not as good as I am now. And I think I gotta give a shout out to Royal because. Me and Royal are pretty good friends. Like we we talk a lot online and stuff. And yeah. um, I changed my line name to Royal Sun as like a joke. <laughs> so um, Royal's I such asked an Royal awesome like, dude, I, I'm I, I started playing like Night Witch in the back, just Golem at the bridge. And although that's aggressive, I think it's just not the way you play Royal and uh, the Golem and Royal Lake is like, dude, that's so cringy. So <laughs> I, I um nice so Royal impersonation. I, I kept um yeah there we go. I, I'm at nice talk Romanian to him enough. accent so, bag. I like it. So yeah. Uh, I basically, uh, he's got Mega Knight, so I can't pump right there. But he basically told me, play every game until double elixir as if you're down elixir. No matter what, so you restrain yourself to um, to not play the golem aggressively because then they can punish you. Unless you're 100% sure they have a bad cycle, you have the cycle advantage and at least a 5 elixir advantage, you shouldn't golem unless you can like exploit it. If they're playing like 2.6 yeah. and you have like a NATO cycle and they're going to hog, you can just NATO that. But, um, oh, it's NATO this, speaking of NATOs, there we go. So that's a really good tip. Now, it doesn't apply to every mode, like, I mean, that, that's like top ladder, like top 1,000, you should be doing that. But even down low, like, if you're playing against some good players that aren't, like, I, I, I think that's just a good thing. To, yeah, I think so. I think that's if you're trying to go universal, and become yeah. a better player, um, yeah. So, yeah, well, you should just be more patient. If you're what else did Royal teach you? Can be Any other tips um, that you can pass on from him? That affected um, your game, or the changes you made because of of him, or, or changes to the the way you played. Well, he taught me how to play ping pong better when I went to the Immortals' house. He, he's pretty good. he's pretty good at ping pong. Um, another thing he told me is um, you gotta like, like he's he's like one of the best ladder players of all time, and right yeah. now probably the most dominant along with the Igor. All right, we're up a, we're up a nice bit of elixir right here. Um, and we're going to double, so we're going to go in. But he told me, like, Ben, you got to stop tilting. Because, like, last season I had three accounts, 6,900, and I tilted all of them. And um, it, it's quite unfortunate. So I'm, this season I'm trying to be more patient. Because um, I just – I think this mindset I have is, like, if I lose, I just need to get it back. It's only yeah. one game. It shouldn't be that hard. So you really need to restrain yourself. Um, and if you can do that, you know – You'll, you'll be much better ladder player. And I was doing that pretty well last se play the season, but then I got into that panic mode where it's like, oh, I need to, I need to until here. I need to get up high to top 100. And I think just being patient and taking breaks is like a really, really key thing. Okay. Cool. Uh, um, so and I think that like, yeah. And I think that you start to lose, at least me, like I start to lose focus with the, you know, the more I kind of lose. Just get you, know? really, you get really aggressive too. Yeah. So Keep yeah. that mindset, and you really restrain yourself to playing the golem aggressively. Keep poison, so I can pump, and the king tower is activated to hit the miner, and that's in the placement where um the um the king tower will always hit the miner. Okay. Um, we're gonna go in the back here. If he mega knights at the bridge, we do have that prince. He's probably gonna go left lane. Um, he might support with some bats. So we got a nato here. He's gonna miner the pump, and the okay, nice. He missed the pump. Well played, bud. All right, so. The, that's gonna take care of that, and then he okay. See that he zapped, so he needs the dark prince, and he's going way too aggressive here. Mm -hmm. So now, even though the golem's gonna die, it's the the ice was slowing it down. That's gonna help um get that mega minion in there. He plays his bats. That's well played. Uh, get a tornado. He's gonna play a goblin king. Okay, mega knight. He got enough. But now I know he's at three. Okay. Um, so this is that's where that like last second need to get the card down elixir counting came comes into place um, He might go in aggressive Okay, that, that's good play um, yep. Trying to be a visionary out here. This is, this is, so, this is a good match see, though This is a good match. Um, he's gonna go here um, The Prince okay, that's fine. I need to go with the bridge here. He can't the Prince counter pushes So he can't play Mega Knight the bridge. Okay. Um, if he does, he's probably gonna do that right now. Yeah. So I just go Dark Prince here, and I can and simply tornado it. this back. Yep. And there it is. Boom. GG. He was really GG. aggressive opposite lane because he could lean yeah, on that Inferno I, Dragon. So. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, heck, man, do you want to do one more with the Golem deck? Cause it's your favorite. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. And, All right. Cool. Um, 
Yeah, let's go into go let's this gold deck. I made it. I didn't see how it was gonna work, or I didn't know how it was gonna work, but I'm. I think it's actually pretty solid. Yeah. I really like the Dark Prince in here. Um, another thing is, guys, if you don't have the Dark Prince leveled up, the Valkyrie is a great substitution. Um, the cool. Ghost got nerfed, so it's not as great. Um, so we got the Golem here in okay. hand, but we're not gonna play it aggressively. Back to the back to Golem when you uh, or back to like your tips for the deck and stuff like that. Uh, do you how often, if ever, do you find yourself kind of like that last match playing Golem at the bridge, playing your support troops first, kind of like what Royal was cringing at? Well, Golem at the bridge isn't something Royal cringes at. In fact, he does it a lot. Yeah. Um, so when are stuff. the right situations to do it? When it's the end of the game, you're up elixir and they can't punish you, and you need to get final chip damage, and then you get good elixir trades, and then you can get yourself in a good position. What if you have like a surviving uh, mega minion? And I like let's just say you had, you know, let's say this was a situation, but you had like a couple elixir lead. No, Would you drop a golem in that? Not a giant. Okay. <laughs> it's not. It's not giant unless it's the end of the game and then gotcha. it's like overtime and you have a lead. If you don't have a lead and it's not overtime. So like let your just surviving right. troops just have the wherewithal to pump up again or or let them go. Yeah. Okay. Alright, this is the Minion Horde is a really annoying card. Yeah. Minion Horde um, is It's gonna get a hit. I I, I need to let that go because I need the um the bar barrel for his goblin gang. Yeah. Um but you have a pump that he um, didn't answer. Yeah, yeah, I have a pump. So I'm gonna just cycle a mega minion here. Um he's gonna goblin barrel, so that's that's a great place to use the bar barrel. I'm gonna clean that up. And then I'm gonna play a pump here, and now that we're going to double elixir, and I have the lead, he won't be able to break through again unless I make a misplay, um, misclick, misplay, any miss kind of thing. <laughs> I got 13 viewers. Thank you, thank you, Facebook. I appreciate it. Nice. And you uh, actually mentioned it earlier. I want to make sure I give a big shout out that you do stream daily. Like, what when you go back to school, are you gonna stream like at yeah. night in the evenings? Um, well, at night I will, unless I, of course I have schoolwork, because yeah. that's more important. But um, yeah. if I'm, I'm gonna try to space it out so that doesn't happen. Okay. Um, so over here. He's gonna play minion horde. He he should yeah. Okay. There it is. Wow. Wait. Whoa. Okay, that was very athletic by him. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Uh, this this uh, um the Sparky this deck does not run as F. So that spark the Sparky is something I would not expect people to run. But this guy um another thing trading the trading feature um this game is over. But I, we'll try to make some kind of prediction play here. Sure, sure, sure. Let's see. Sparky's okay. like, oh! <laughs> um, yeah, Sparky is something that you don't see a lot, but some people that have been using like certain decks since the beginning have yeah. used the trade feature to max, mm -hmm. and then um, giving like friendling for that, so they can max that deck that they've been using since like the start. And I think a lot of the people use all their ledge tokens just on Sparky, and then the E-Drag came in, and they are like very, like very upset about it, and um, they but they can't switch decks now because they they they're, they're not like sparky, yeah. they, they're not yeah yeah so well hey good for good for those people who are still believers right and at least they have a like the, yeah. he actually ran Asuchini's deck so yeah um, that was the deck that I think that like Kyo Kyo used that way back in the day for like the YouTuber challenge or whatever that was in the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but heck, Bag, uh, thanks a lot for playing, man. I really love having you on the channel. Um, You're a great, great guest. Uh, keep up the fantastic work. Any shout-outs or anything like that, man? Um, shout-out to Nova. Shout-out to the FA squad. Shout-out to um, TKO, the Brawl Stars band. Um, I made my own clan. It's part of Nova called Grocery Store, so you I can join that. up if you're around like 4905k but we're slowly leveling up so we might have to move people down but we made a secondary clan called farmers market so we're looking for people <laughs> if you're a 3k and you need a home clan join up but we might need to make some space because if the clan progresses obviously as you go on and clan wars 3k players it's gonna be harder but if you need a home for now we'll just keep expanding the brands when we realize that a lot of people are trying to join and we just don't have enough space so um yeah we can put the the clan hashtags in the description my mm -hmm. youtube i might try to um i'm gonna try to use that more um i might do double streaming i'm not sure um it's bag cr the link will also be in the description twitch.tv slash bag cr underscore um see so yeah, i'm really trying to do some more content out there yeah man oh uh, youtube awesome. I'm, I'm not I, i'm not sure how to edit as well um i'll try to learn that so it's part of being a youtuber um ash is pretty fantastic at that so thank you ash, definitely for help me you on. out man no problem at all. Uh, and, and like like Bag said, Bag said it all, guys. Everything that you need will be in the show notes. Uh, thanks again for coming on, man. Appreciate it. Take care, guys. All right, Pleasure. guys. He's still in my line, Bag. He's still in my line. What am I going to say now? Thank <laughs> you to our partner, Bren Chong. Um, okay. Hey, you want to do it? You want to take it away? 
Uh, I, I don't know it perfectly. Shout out to my it's... YouTube partner, Brent Chong. Um, thank you guys for watching again. Uh, the, the overlay, I think, uh, the guy's huh. name starts with R. Radical Rush, yeah. Shout to him. <laughs> very, very, oh, yeah. very, very close. That we'll, we'll go with it. Uh, but check out Bags, stats, and player information. Thanks to StatsForL.com in the show notes below, along with his Twitch profile, his social media, etc. And as Bags said, huge shout out to Brent Chong, my YouTube partner. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Until the end of the video, I really appreciate it. And as always, take care, guys.